Okay, I went to the antique store, found a bunch of really cute vessels and thought, you know what? I should turn these into candles. So this is week four of the New Year New Skill series. This week, it's all about vintage container candles. All right, friends, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Molly, also known as Good Golly Gal. And this year we have been doing a new year, new skill series where every week in January, I am teaching you guys a new skill. Well, we've already done three, this is week four. So if you have missed those, you need to go back and watch the others, but you don't need to do it right now. So they are separate projects. So whenever you finish this one, hop on over to the other three. So I have linked everything that I'm using here. People are always asking me what I'm using. I've got a five pound bag of 100% soy wax. These are six inch core candle wicks. All of these are from Hearts and Crafts. This is also from Heart and Craft, which how cute is that? Now this pack, the five pound pack actually came with the wax, the wicks and two wick holders. You're gonna need a scale because everything in candle making is all about the weight. You're either gonna need metal or silicone spoons. You're going to need a candy thermometer, a separate glass container to weigh your fragrance oils. You're gonna need fragrance oils. I shared some of my favorites on my Amazon storefront. If you're like me, you're gonna need your readers. You're also gonna need a pot because the wax has to be melted like a double boiler. So this will actually go into the pot. You're gonna need some sort of element. So you can do this on your stovetop or you can just get a single burner like I did so that I could do this downstairs. You're either gonna need some wick stickers or you can just use some hot glue to attach the wick to the bottom of the vessel. Speaking of vessels, so I went to my local antique store and guys, some of you may have seen the lead test that I did. One of my vessels did not make the cut because it did have lead, which was a very heated topic. I didn't realize how passionate people were about lead. You can do whatever you want with your materials that have lead. I just had also researched and found that when a vessel containing lead is heated, that sometimes it can release a toxic vapor. I just figured it wasn't worth the risk. Plus it's a super cute container, so I'm just gonna put it up in my china cabinet. It'll be fine. I will not be using it for food, just FYI. So these are the vessels that actually passed. This adorable little one, kind of looks like a little planter. Found this guy, he's my favorite. Let me hide so that the camera will look at it. So these two were from my antique store and then the three of these that I got were from the thrift store and I actually found these in three different spots in the thrift store. So there could be more in there. I just, I found the three and was good. Now I also bought these wax melts because if there's any leftover wax, you can just pour it in here. That way you can use them as wax melts or if you ever need to top off a candle later, like if, the, if any of the wax caves in, you can just melt a little bit of this instead of having to make a whole new batch. So I have filled this pot just a little under halfway full and I'm gonna stick this onto my little single burner. I'm gonna turn the heat to medium high. So you want it a little bit warmer than medium because you want it to simmer. You do not want it boiling. All right, so while that heats up, let's go ahead and prepare everything else. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to weigh out our wax. There are a bunch of waxes out there. There's soy, paraffin, there's beeswax, there's, there are blends, there's soy coconut blend, there's all different types of waxes. I am going with soy. Um, soy is actually a really clean burning wax, so there's not a lot of soot. Okay, so first thing we've gotta do, we've gotta weigh our wax. So I'm going to set this on the scale. You're gonna need to tear the scale, meaning you're gonna need to set this to zero so that this doesn't count as weight. Okay, so I've got two pounds of wax. I'm gonna put this into the pan and let this start to melt. You're just gonna to wanna to watch it. You will need to stir it, which is why these are really great. All right, so while that melts, we've gotta figure out our scents. I've debated on whether or not I should make my own scent or if I should just use a single scent. I kinda of wanna mix them. The great thing is, is because you weigh everything, you can mix it pretty easily. Now I got the P&J Clean Home and Citrus sets. And the reason I got those is so that I could have 
a variety of scents. Ooh. Okay, I really like the bergamot. Okay. Orange is also really nice. Now, when it comes to choosing the right oil for your candle, you wanna make sure that you're going with a non-toxic oil and you wanna get a fragrance oil. Fragrance oils are going to give off a stronger scent. They're easier to use. They're not quite as finicky as essential oils. One way to mix fragrance oils without wasting too much oil is to simply get a plastic bag and some Q-tips. What you're gonna do is just dab a little bit of the oil that you want for each of the scents on a Q-tip, place it into a Ziploc bag, seal it up, give it a little bit of time, and then open it and smell. If you like that scent, you're probably gonna like that candle. Let me know in the comments your favorite candle scent. I need, I need some inspiration. All right, now we've gotta prepare our vessels because our wax will be melted soon. So if any of you guys make candles or have a candle business, be sure to share it below. I would love to check it out. Oh, we have melted. All right, so I'm just gonna put my thermometer in here and we're just gonna watch this. All right, so I've got my candy thermometer in here. What we're looking for is 185 degrees. So we're gonna let that get up to that temp. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our wicks in our vessels. So I'm gonna do a single wick for these two, but this guy is a little bit bigger and it's kind of tricky because this top part fans out more. This is not really an ideal shape for a vessel, but what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna put two wicks in it to be safe. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue, put this right on here, and then stick this down into the vessel. So now for the ugly truth, this oh my gosh, this single burner is garbage. Or when the water was simmering, the pot started to dance across this thing and went and danced its way off the counter. Thankfully, I was adjusting my camera so I did not get burned because this would have burned the snot out of me. Now I've got a huge mess to clean up. So I just had to go upstairs and melt new wax because I thought I would be cheap and buy a super cheap generic single burner. Don't be like me. I have linked a very nice single burner on my Amazon storefront. Don't go cheap. Or this could be you. I'm gonna go ahead and get my scents. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Okay, my wax is a little bit above 185, so I'm gonna let this sit for just a minute, let that cool down and come down to 185. And I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring out my scent. So my fragrance oils, with this company, uh, they recommended that I do one ounce of fragrance oil per pound of wax that I used. With these scents, I ended up coming up with a brand new one. And just so you know, if you get the little sampler pack, these are just 10 milliliters. Um, there are actually 29 point something, something, something milliliters in an ounce. That means three of these bottles equals an ounce, which means to get two pounds worth of wax, I need six of these bottles. I tried out all of the citrus scents and I actually love all of them together, so we're going crazy, y'all. We are mixing it up, and so this is going to be my citrus candle. We're going wild. We're gonna do lemongrass and lime and bergamot and lemon and grapefruit and orange. Our wax. All right, perfect. Time to start adding our fragrance oils. 
every little last drop out of there. Now I'm gonna stir this for two minutes. All right, trusty phone, tell me when it's been two minutes. When you're playing around with fragrance oils, the way that it smells straight out of the bottle is the cold throw. It's the way that it smells without it being heated. And then the hot throw is the way that a fragrance oil smells once you've lit the candle. And so it's really important to test and make small candles to see which fragrance oils do the best. Because something can smell really great cold and really not great hot. Or it's really weak when it's heated. Not all fragrance oils do well as a candle. Okay, so according to P&J, they want you to let your wax sit until it reaches 110 degrees. So we're gonna let it cool down a little bit before we actually pour it into our vessels. So this little kit only came with two of the little wick holders. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use some washi tape. Some people will do popsicle sticks, but Washi tape works just fine. Now, some people will put their vessels into an oven to heat them up before putting wax into them. Better to pour hot wax into a warm vessel as opposed to a cold one. I've heard, and I have not experienced this, but if it's a real cold vessel, that sometimes the wax will pull away from the edges of the vessel. But instead of doing the oven, I actually put mine in hot water and then just dried them off. But you could also, use a heat gun if they don't feel warm enough and you can just heat them up with a heat gun. I'm curious how this is gonna smell once it's burned because it is very fruity right now. Very fruity. I've got my vessels ready. I've got some little clamshells. These are the little wax melts. I've got these ready just in case I have extra wax. So let's start pouring. Okay friends, so these need to sit for two weeks before you burn them. So after two weeks, you can cut the wick somewhere between half an inch and a quarter of an inch and they will be ready to burn. Now we have to wait two weeks. So I promise you that in two weeks, I'm gonna do a little follow-up in my YouTube shorts and show you guys how they burn and let you know how they smell and all that. Once your candles have set, if there's any cracking, any caving, any ugliness to them. The way to finish them off professionally is a heat gun. You just melt a little bit of that top wax, it's gonna even out and it's gonna be beautiful, okay? So don't worry about it. If there's a massive hole and you're like, oh my gosh, this wax has like disappeared on me, where did it go? You've now got, if you bought these, you know how these little extras, these little wax melts, pop one out, melt it down, and then pour that into that little hole and you're, you're golden. You don't have to worry about trying to get that exact scent back. I'm curious to see how this one's gonna smell burning. It is very fruity, far more fruity than I'm used to. I can't say that I am recommending mixing all of the scents. It'll just depend on what it smells like when it's burning. We won't know, we won't know until we burn it. So I promise, two weeks, you and I have a date. I'm gonna light that candle and we're gonna, I'm gonna smell it. I'm gonna let you know what it smells like. If you planned it out properly and you didn't try to make as many candles as I did, a little sample pack is plenty, okay? If you know there's a scent that you want, just go ahead and buy the bigger bottle and then you don't have to mix all of these together. This was a great way for me to smell these though. And now I know that I love their bergamot. I love their lime. I love their grapefruit. I love their orange. Uh, I, I really like their scents. Their scents were really nice. So y'all have fun with it. Try it out. Do something new. It's, it's exciting. And, and guys, if, you're, if you are coming here thinking that I am gonna be perfect and do a perfect job, well, we haven't met, have we? Hi, I'm Molly, and I am far from perfect. You will, you will learn that about me. But I have fun, and I love to teach, and I love to share these passions of mine, and crafting is so much fun, and I love DIY projects, and I love food too, which I haven't shared a recipe in a while, but 
we just have fun here. So guys, if you haven't done it lately, you need to go have yourself a little me time. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.